What are some of the tips that you you would give to investors? Like your top top strikers, top tips. Top tips. Um, how do I even give these tips? I feel like no matter what I say, like even if you write down everything I say, there's a high chance that you will not be able to make money from it. Because I mean, trading is a very personal. Thing. If you're going to trade stuff aggressively, it's it's easier to have that long term mindset where you build and you know that you're building for a certain time than to be trying to like make money on spot. So my top tip: have a plan. I feel like that's a generic tip that you know everybody gets. Be a smart goals, but have specific plans for any specific trade you want to make so you're going in at x price you want to make this percentage from it what's going to happen around the company during the timeline that you're working with that's going to move it from that price and from from the price it is now to where you want it to go what are the market conditions that need to happen what are the the cues that you're going to be the, the clues that you're going to be um seeing when you know this this trade is about to be successful and you have to record this i think it's very important to actually write down your reasons for each of these trades that you're doing so in the event that it actually doesn't work out you can go back to the start you can see what went wrong what you need to change you won't make that mistake again so you have to be recording so as I say, have a plan and record the plan. Write it down. Have a little notebook. I have a little book that I write my trades down and, and, and all of that. So mm-hmm. I can always look back at a certain time and, you know, this did happen when this condition was happening in the market. That's how the market behaved at that time. Is the market going to behave like that at this time? Are the conditions the same? What's happening? So I think that um are pretty important thing for people to do make your plan right down your plan follow your plan if the market changes you have to change your plan so a plan that will work for certain market conditions is not going to work for a different type of market condition and that's the next point that's the next step you have to know the market you have to know the companies but you also have to know the market. So fundamental analysis, very important. Um, I know we brush over it a lot, but it's it's really something that you have to like sit down and make sure you understand. Mm-hmm. I think this year taught us with some of the stuff that happened this year that really taught us. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Ran, <laughs> you remember that episode there where Ran said, Observe what you're buying into. If a company is not worth anything on paper, Mm -hmm. it's not worth anything. Mm -hmm. If the financials do not make sense, it is not worth anything. Mm -hmm. So in other words, a company with negative equity cannot be worth anything. That's a that's a fact. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't be losing money for ten years. I want to come and command some why? Because because you have you're in a hole, like if you're coming to me to buy me for me to buy you, like I don't know what you're worth. If your equity, your balance sheet is zero. You see what I'm saying? Like, and, and these are the things I feel like are lost in the narrative, in the investor narrative sometimes. And if you look at when he said that, and you yeah. look at the events that have happened. Wow, it yeah. is a lesson. Yeah, yeah. Big up Ryan for that lesson. I hope people, Big I hope people Ryan. listen to that and yeah. learn. Big up Ryan. Yeah, which I episode? We, we'll find the episode. And I will try to. It. Yeah, I, I will remember try to the find. episode. He said too. about companies not worth anything on paper. If it has negative equity, it is not worth anything. Mm-hmm. Hard lesson for learning. Very important lesson. Very important lesson. Yeah, man. Yeah. So. Know your fundamentals, but also know the market that you are participating in, that you're investing in. Um, 
you have to understand the whole psychology of the market. The market is a very investing is a very psychological thing. It's very emotional, but you have to understand people. You have to understand how you know people go through their emotions. Um, people react to good news and bad news differently. People are slow to react to good news, but if bad news drops everybody is moving inside yeah. you, know, you know there's an actual like scientists have actually studied that there was mm -hmm. a book i was reading i think it was thinking in bets mm -hmm. and there's like a name of the phenomenon essentially say you lose um like 50 percent or hold on what was it so it's like losses essentially hurt us a lot more mm -hmm. like the, the amount of yeah the amount of pain you feel from a loss and say you're, there was fifty, it was like a fifty percent loss, a fifty percent gain. The fifty percent loss hits you way more, even if it. And then there's even like a, I think a ratio or a calculation they were doing that. Okay, even like a, maybe a forty percent loss, that that pain that you feel, mm -hmm. is way more than the the joy you'll feel of like a fifty percent gain. So it's not like equal. It's not like oh, a yeah. fifty percent loss. So like it's, things yes, like it's that. Never the same. Mm -hmm. But I think like that's something that gets a little better for you the more you stick to your your long-term goals so for like me those those kind of losses no they don't really affect me the same way that they would have in my earlier years so earlier years like i've been doing it for decades <laughs> <laughs> but yeah in my earlier Skin years in the it, game <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah, it's not as bad for me. I can easily make decisions to take a loss at a certain time um if I don't think it makes sense for the goal that I had for that specific stuff. And um before I'd be you know in a panic and I'd probably be too afraid to sell because I'm too afraid to take the loss and then it just gets worse. And you're, you're, you get to the point where you have no choice but to take an even bigger loss because mm -hmm. you saw the signs of this not working out, but because of your fear of actually losing the money, you know, thinking that this is going to be it after you take this loss, then you don't do it. But there are so many other opportunities. You just kind of have to find the next opportunity. Yeah, so, I think one of the biggest lessons for me in that is... Um, once the stock price goes down, you're already in a loss position. And once I've realized that, it makes my next move much clearer. All right, mm -hmm. once, the, once the price gone down, bro, you, I mean, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. if you're barring against it, they're doing it on the, the market price, right? Mm -hmm. If you're doing like, you know, it's not the price you bought the stock at. So no matter what, you've lost this money. So mm -hmm. you've already made the loss. What is the next step? So telling myself that yo, if the if the stock price has gone down already, and I've lost, I've just lost money, and that's that's okay if it aligns. If if it's okay, so there's a um a, a forex term. My forex regions will, will 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 remind me about it. It's your stop loss, right? Where you have a um that almost like that floor, that floor. where if you hit that floor. Then you should be out of that. No trade. matter what you come out. No matter what, this is it, right? So I can I can manage maybe at a twenty percent loss here. Mm -hmm. If it gets more than that, out, right? At, at that twenty percent, anything worse than that, I'm out. Um, I believe so in that. Yeah, it's always good to have your stop losses. Have right? your stop loss. And even if it's say twenty percent, if you're down ten percent, you should still reevaluate. Is this the right? Is this the right um, stock? Am I in the right thing to meet my goal, as you said? Because you're talking about smart goals, right? Mm -hmm. And if this stock isn't the thing that's going to meet my goals, if you see it declining, it's either you buy more or you're out or you hold, right? As Preston says, but you have to be re-evaluating. So, yeah, it's just my two cents. Yeah, another tip, I'd say I know the curve. Know what everybody else is doing. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily for you to follow what everybody is doing, but you need to understand what is happening, and you need to understand how the curve thinks, how the the 
the, the bigger public thing so that you can start thinking before them. Yeah. By the time everybody else catches on to what you would have been preparing for, it's time for you to actually profit from the curve. Because everybody buying on the same curve, it's not going to work out. The market is designed for people to lose. Majority of the people who are trading in the market are going to lose. That It can only be so many winners. And that's something that you can't kind of have to bear in mind. You and everybody else can't be doing the same thing. Because only 80% of you guys are actually going to be making money from what you're trying to do. So you need to learn how to separate yourself from the curve. So learn how the curve thinks, when the curve is going to react, you know, how the curve reacts to certain type of news, you know, how they react to dividends, how they react to good results, how they react to bad results. And if you get that down, you can make a lot of money from the market.